I just drove 150 miles and bought every stove canister I could find. Then I froze them outside overnight when it was about 15 below zero. In the morning, I tried to boil water on every single one of these when the temperature was between about minus five and five degrees Fahrenheit. Now, I've been seeing a lot of reviews and videos on YouTube recently about using canister stoves in the winter. And to be honest, most of those don't align with what I've experienced in real life. So I wanted to do a test with every brand and size canister I could find to see what works and what doesn't and how well they work in real Minnesota winter conditions. So to do that, I have an MSR reactor, which is probably the best canister stove on the market. And we're gonna compare that performance against a gasoline fueled stove, a MSR XGK EX with an Arctic fuel pump. So that's MSR's top of the line cold weather stove. Now, a quick note before we get started on stove fuel. How these things work is there's a liquid in the can and that liquid is constantly boiling and then your stove burns the gas vapor that boils off of that liquid. There's two types of fuel. There's summer and then like an all season and winter blend. Your summer blend is a butane propane mixture and your winter or all season blend is an isobutane and propane mixture. Now, your butane has a boiling point of about 31 degrees Fahrenheit. So that means when these stove canisters hit about 31 degrees Fahrenheit, they quit working. Isobutane on the other end has a boiling point of about 11 degrees Fahrenheit. So that means these canisters will work down to about 11 degrees Fahrenheit. There are techniques to get them to work colder than that, but I see those as more of like an emergency survival technique versus something you should rely on. So basically below freezing, you need to be using isobutane and below about 11 degrees, you should really be switching to a gasoline stove. Now with that said, let's cut to the morning and we'll do the review of all these canisters. Well, it's the morning. I've had everything sitting out here overnight, so it's all frozen. It was supposed to be 15 below zero overnight. Currently, according to my $3 thermometer, it's about three below zero. Google says that it's like minus seven, so we're somewhere in that range. We're gonna go ahead, boil half a liter of ice water with each of these, hopefully, and we'll see how they work. So to get started, we're gonna fire up the gasoline fuel stove first, kind of as the control, because this one should work. All right, we got this stove going. It's nice and hot, half a liter of water. All right, so this thing boiled the water in about three minutes and 50 seconds. Not a problem. So now we're gonna get onto the canister stoves and see if those will do the same. Starting it off, we're gonna start with the small canisters first. We've got the Optimus um, Energy Gas. This one says it is a butane propane isobutane mixture. We'll see if it even lights. I don't have a whole lot of faith that most of these will even light. Well, well I guess I was wrong. So the stove's kind of sputtering. What happened when I lit it was there was a little liquid fuel in the valve um, from when I was handling it. That lit and burnt off. And now, as you can see, I mean, I'm using a full-size kitchen match. There is not enough gas pressure to relight the stove. So that initial flare-up was a little bit of liquid fuel in it. Once that burnt off, there's no vapor pressure. Minus two degrees Fahrenheit um, was too much for the Optimus canister. It just won't light. All right, on to the next one. This is a Korean-made Kove Premium Blend Fuel Isobutane. Let's see what it's all about. Okay, this one's doing the thing where there's a little blue flame that kind of dances around up on top of the screen. And I have had that happen before when I'm running fuel colder than it's supposed to be.
and it's trying to light, but it ain't working very well. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now the stove actually just lit. It's doing the same thing as the Optimus, where it's just kind of sputtering. It's not actually really lighting. It's just kind of little tiny little flare-ups. There's not enough gas pressure to actually get the burner going. All right, it will not relight. So the Kove uh, Korean isobutane canister, minus two degrees after sitting outside all night. Too much for it. Now granted, these canisters are probably colder than minus two degrees, because um, they were sitting outside, it was colder than that. Next, we'll move on to the GSI isobutane fuel cartridge, all season fuel mixture. Okay, so this one's advertised as all season. Okay, I'm hearing a little gas come out of it. And we're doing the same thing, a blue flame kind of dancing around the top of the stove, but it's not actually jumping down into the burner. You know, see if it's hot enough to light a match. Okay. All right, now the flame did jump down into the burner itself. But it's doing the same thing, sputtering. Uh, not really lighting. This one seems slightly more aggressive than the last couple of cans. And the burner actually is starting to turn the tiniest bit orange in the center. Okay. This one's trying to go. The burner did warm up a little bit. But it won't stay lit. Alright, this one's dead. Alright, so so far the GSI is in the lead. It actually warmed the burner up enough that I could kind of feel it a little bit through my leather gloves, but it wasn't actually hot enough to boil water. It would have been one of those things where if the pot sat on it like that for 45 minutes, it might have been warm. Next up, Snow Peak Gigapower. This is an isobutane propane mix, but it is 85% isobutane and only 15% propane, so it should have less cold weather performance than the other 80-20 mixtures. But, you know. Okay, same thing, a little blue flame dancing around on top of the stove. Won't actually jump down into the burner. Stove's not lighting at all, yeah. The Snow Peak Giga Power is a no-go. Um, probably the worst performance so far. Up next, Jet Boil, Jet Power, Isobutane Propane Mix. Four season performance, it says. Okay, a little flame dancing around on top of the stove. Flame's kind of dancing around on top of it. Hasn't jumped down into the burner yet. Just died out. Okay, the flame did just jump down into the burner. It'll kind of sputter if I hold a match up to it, but as soon as I take the match away, it quits going. All right, so the Jet Boil Jet Power Four Season Blend, minus two below zero, sitting outside all night, is not capable of running. Okay, now we're going to get into the uh, 230 gram canisters, the eight ounces. We'll see if there's any difference in performance. So I guess we can start right off with this one. This is another 
Uh, the same thing, Jet Boil, Jet Power, Four Season Performance Blend. This one, though, is about half empty. Absolutely nothing. I'm not even hearing any gas out of it. The other cans, when I turned them on, I did hear a little bit of gas escape. This one, uh, nothing. So the 50% full jet boil can is not working. Next up, we have this Max Butane Fuel High Performance Fuel Blend Cartridge. Um from Korea. I think this one's just butane and propane. I don't think it's isobutane, but it's hard to tell. Oh, a lot of gas pressure coming off this one. Okay, there we go. Took it a minute, but the stove took. Burner is actually starting to warm up a little bit. Okay, so far this one has gotten hotter than the GSI can. The burner is probably about a third of the way warm, maybe. We'll go ahead and try to boil on it, see if it works. All right, half a liter of ice water. And the stove was barely running at 10 minutes. Uh, at 11 minutes it had died. The water is steaming the slightest amount. So, it started off as ice water in the coffee thermos, and it warmed it up to the coldest it could possibly be and still be kind of lukewarm. So, yeah, that's that. Um, I, don't, I think if you tried to use it again, it probably wouldn't even work, because, like I said before, I think all the propane will boil off of these. We'll try relighting it. This one's in the lead, but will not boil water in this temperature. All right, next up, Coleman Performance Blend Butane Propane Mix. Uh, my experiences with this stuff is that it doesn't work very well when you start to get around freezing. But every Walmart has it. It's super available, by far the easiest fuel to find. Not hearing any gas pressure coming out of the can. Yeah, there's no gas pressure coming out of the can. It won't light at all. Absolutely nothing with this one. Now, I think I did use this can a couple of times, but it's basically still full. So, just barely used. Um, it won't even start. Okay. Next up is a little science experiment here. We have a almost completely empty can of Sterno, which I've actually been impressed with this fuel. It did boil some water the other day for me when it was about five degrees outside, um, but I had to warm the can up to do it. We'll see if it even lights. Like I said, this can's about 95% empty. Yep, no gas coming out of it. So, when this can gets down to about being empty, um, it doesn't have anything left. Okay, now we're going to move up to the big can of Coleman uh, Butane Propane Mix, the Performance Blend. I got a hypothesis that the larger the can, even though um, it's cold out here, it might produce enough vapor to run. All right, 
right, I'm not hearing any gas come out of this one, and it's not lighting. So the 16-ounce butane propane mix will not work in these temperatures at all. All right, now we have the last science experiment, and that is just the, simply the size of the can. So I've got the three MSR um, isopro fuels, they're um, isobutane propane mix, the three sizes. We're gonna run each of these three and see if there's any different results with the same fuel in different sizes. Okay, so this one's doing the same thing as the other cans. We've got a blue flame kind of dancing around the top. It hasn't gone down into the burner yet. But it is stronger than some of the cans. Okay, it just, uh, the flame just jumped down into the burner. And the burner is actually starting to glow orange just a little bit. I'm actually getting some heat off of this thing. All right, so far this little can of MSR Isopro seems to be the hottest yet. Um, it does look like the burner is slightly warmer than the Max Butane fuel. So I think this one's in the lead. It doesn't look like it's going to get any warmer though. So we'll go ahead and put some water on it see what happens. Okay, so before I could even get a fresh pot of cold water on it, uh, it died. So it probably ran for a couple minutes, sputtered, and died. What that tells me is that the MSR fuel doesn't work in the cold either. Now we'll see if we get different results from the different sizes of fuel cans. So far the winner of the bunch though is the MSR fuel. That is the best, that was the best small canister that produced the most heat. And an eight ounce Isopro can, MSR. Okay, same thing, we're getting a blue flame dancing around the top of it. Except there is a lot more gas pressure leaving the can. Okay, so the flame just jumped down into the burner itself. Okay, so the burner is kind of sputtering. It's warm a little bit. It's actually not quite as warm as it was with the smaller can, which is really surprising. I'm going to go ahead and put the pot of cold water on it, and we'll see what happens. All right, it's been about 12 minutes now for the MSR. 230 gram and the stove is still running still producing a little bit of heat um, so it's in the lead <clears throat> getting a little bit of steam off the water we're gonna see how warm it is okay this water is actually fairly warm um, it's not hot, it's still drinkably warm, but like it's, it's actually surprisingly warm. Um, yeah, not hot, but warm. So that puts the MSR ISO Pro 230 gram can in the lead. Um, definitely a little bit warmer than the max butane fuel made the water. We're going to end it at, um, about 10 minutes here for these. That might boil the water if I let it sit there for... 30 or 45 minutes, but I don't really got time for that. So the last thing we're going to try is the 16 ounce can of MSR Isopro. The same thing as the small and medium sized can, just a larger can, hypothetically it will produce more vapor and might actually get the stove to run. It's probably the most gas pressure coming out of this one is any of them. Doesn't really want to light though. Okay, the burner finally lit. And 
and it is getting hotter faster than any of the other fuel cans. Okay, I'm gonna get some fresh water, put it on this. So far, the burner is by far the hottest that it's been. Okay, things been going for a couple minutes. Uh, it's noticeably hotter than all the other cans. Got some ice water, we'll put it on it, we'll see what happens. Okay, so I came back outside at 10 minutes and the water was actually boiling. So the 16 ounce can did get half a liter of cold water to boil in about 10 minutes. Now the temperature though, it has warmed up a little bit and now it's about four degrees Fahrenheit. So keep that in mind. Granted, this can's probably colder than that because it was sitting outside all day. And, it, you know, we're sitting in the shade here. So this last test goes to show that even though these three fuel cans are all the same exact type of fuel, they're all brand new cans, the size of the can has an effect. But that doesn't mean that you can just go ahead and bring 16 ounce cans with you in the winter and you'll be fine. Keep in mind that, like, you know, when this can's half full, it's only going to perform as well as this can does when it's full. When it's a quarter full, it's going to perform as well as this can does, which it didn't. This can really, uh, it didn't make enough heat to do hardly anything. So, all three of these have the same fuel. This is more to illustrate that the fuel itself still doesn't work in the cold, even though you might get it to run for a short while. The MSR fuel does seem to work pretty well, but all in all, current temperature is 4 degrees, so between about minus 4 and 4 degrees. None of these really perform satisfactory, except this large can, which after a few uses, this large can would start performing like the rest of them, because its volume would then drop. So, should you be bringing these cans out in the winter, I would recommend against it unless you know it's going to be fairly warm. Now you might think, okay, all this is great, but I'm going to do it anyways. How can I make these cans work in cold? I'm going to link another video up here somewhere that will explain some techniques to try to get these to work in cold weather.